Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Awesome. So this sound like you just right here next door, man. It's because you thousand yeah. miles away. <laughs> Konnichiwa, man. I'm 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 way over here uh, in the uh, far east. You know, uh, with my brother just across the bridge, uh, Glenn Brooks. I know he's uh, you know, he's probably uh, tied up with the grandkids right now. Yeah. But, uh, you know, this is it's historical, man. So you know, congratulations again. Uh, the expansion, uh, the, the the new, uh, you know, spot that you've elevated to, you know, and uh, just excited for you, excited for what we're doing, uh, excited to be over here and, you know, let's make this happen. Let's, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. I hear. So your trip out there was a long trip, um, jet lag. I, I explained to everybody, I think I posted it saying it's 730 in the morning here, but 930 p.m. over there. Yeah, that's why you. You see this dark background here, so I'm still <laughs> catching up on on uh, jet lag. Uh, so Tiff is out and, and knocked out right now, uh, still trying to you know hang with the big dogs. But you so, know, hey, a move, we do, move we do what we gotta do. Yeah, going over there. What was the um, adjustment like? Um, I, I know your body got to go through the. I'm gonna say transformation because you got to actually swing 160 degrees um, as of getting up. I, I bet the first night you was there, you were still up and like it's you here over in the United States. Man, it's um it's crazy because you know you you get off the plane and you're a day ahead of yourself. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you know like right now it's it's 9 20, 9 31 on Wednesday and you guys are just getting up, you know, but it's the day's already over here. We're getting ready to go into, you know, uh Thursday uh here in, in a couple hours. So you know, it's really kind of, you know, strange. It's, it's twilight zone-ish, you know, when you get off the plane and, and you know, it's night, then it's instant. It's, it's quickly day, but it's night, but it's it's crazy, you know, so. But, uh, it, but it's, it's, you, you, could, you could look at it like this, you get paid a day early. <laughs> exactly, you know, uh, it's, it's I'm a day I'm a day ahead of things, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool, man. The transition is, is amazing. Um, just the culture shock. You know, especially uh, when I got there, you know, I quickly was in meetings and I had to, uh, you know, I got my driver's license that morning, taking the test and had, you know, uh, you know, my my, uh, my my chaperone, so to speak, taking me around. And, and uh, when I picked up my car, that's when they got real. You know, I heard uh, because I, I, oh, heard, man, got real. I, I heard that you was actually driving right, like on the wrong side. Of, you know what I mean? It's different than over here. And for what I gather from reports coming to me that uh, you've been maneuvering pretty good around there. God is good, man. You know, so I've been maneuvering uh, pretty well, um, you know, uh, just getting used to driving on the left side of the street. It's really uh, something. And then driving on the left side of the street from the right side of the car is something, you know. And you don't have time to really, it's really a good way to do it the way I did it because I, I kind of got immersed into it. I started out on, on the base that I'm at and then, you know, ended up, you know, the kind of because you drive slower on base. So it allowed me to kind of get gradually into it. As soon as you leave that base, man, it's real time and they don't know that you don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> you got to uh, be ready to roll with it, man. But, you know, it's it's really cool, man, just seeing the different, uh, you know, cultures, the different society, the different mindsets, the food, man, it is really what. They say it is like you have not. If you think you've had ramen, wait till you get it over here, man. I mean, it is amazing. So we got some stuff, some footage that will be, I think, uh, be edited by the one and only Sydney Lee, uh, my daughter, uh, on the Lees overseas. And uh, we, we were going through some footage starting the uh, jail impact uh, hour, um, you know, in terms of uh, the impact, the jail's impact channel. Uh, so there's that sleep deprivation right there. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then, um, then we got uh, Sydney's uh, tips uh, channel too. So, but man, you know, just some really exciting stuff. Um, you know, we're we're in our suite right now. Um, but then we'll be our place is being prepared for us. Uh, we'll be in there hopefully by this this week. So, um, you know, I know about this life. I travel with the, with uh, my with the consulting uh, practice that I do with the with the uh, DOD. And you know it's uh it's 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 powerful, of course, man. When it's time to go, it's go time. Yeah, so I, shout out to the 
United States Army who taught me how to, you know, pop smoke and get and move when it's time to go, you know. Yeah. And uh that's what I'm going on, you know. Well, so, so now we have all that. You know that I'm gonna hit you up with something, you know. Let's go. I, I told somebody the other day, oh, it was Martha. I said, Martha, you know, Joseph blamed me. The reason why we go over because I hit him up with them questions right at the end. Mm -hmm. And she said, Why do you do that? I said, You know, I really don't know. I started doing that, wouldn't realize I was doing it, but it's fun doing it, you know, because that's right. And she said, Well, yeah. when y'all do do it, it's just like y'all feed off each other, and he knows it's coming. Sometimes he don't know it's coming, but the question, I'm not gonna wait to the end of the show to hit you up with a question. Um, the way okay. the way politics are over here. So you heard what happened. He was indicted and um, mm -hmm. was arrested yesterday. He was released on his own reconnaissance. Um, are people talking about that over there, about the United States on our politics? Have you had chance Not at all. Everybody? Not at all. People aren't talking about it. See, the thing is, uh, what I'm noticing is when you're in the United States, everybody talks about the United States. In Japan... This is island life, man. They've got a whole different philosophy over here. Um, if somebody, I have, I haven't heard it at all. I've had to actually go and look, and and you know, kind of uh, dig a little bit, and I kind of allowed myself to kind of uh, relax from being so inundated with it. So um, I know what's going on, but I kind of, you know, I'm kind of uh, moving away from the uh, Donald Trump uh, indictment tour you know, uh, that he's yeah. doing over there in the United States. Because to me, um, you know, on one hand, I think justice is starting to roll kind of slow. But on the other hand, it's kind of interesting. This man has been indicted 37 times in New York. Now, he's been indicted 37, time, 37 times plus uh, in the federal court. Still no mugshot. Still no perp walk. So I see what I think he's doing is using this as a publicity stunt to help really his his campaign. He's using the media and he's using the mindset of people who really um I just I guess caught up in his his uh foolishness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To me, um I'm really not interested in seeing him again until he's got on the orange jumpsuit. You know what I'm saying? I, personally. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it, he's not that important. Put it like that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's important. It's important. It's diabolical what he's done. Um, uh, but see the, the world doesn't look at things the way we look at things, uh, here in the United, well, in the United States, you know, um, but what I will say is, uh, it's about time for him to get a reality check and, as long as he's hitting the, the 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 motorcades and going to restaurants in Miami and uh, you know people saying and, and feeding his ego, um, I think his supporters because I, I just scanned and saw somebody uh, that said I think on the uh, uh, what is this mediate uh, site that. Uh, Trump fan is telling CNN, just kind of show you the mindset, some of the Trump supporters that uh, he's going to vote for him in jail. You know, um, we've, talk, we've talked about it on the show, the cult following that yeah. he has. I think, you know, um, it's really a bad look for the country. In fact, when I was flying over, uh, it was it's, it's a whole different mindset. I, tr I truly believe people need to get out the country and and see the difference and also see how we're being perceived. One of the flight attendants, we, we started talking on the plane because, you know, we got nothing else to do. We're on there for 11 hours, right? Yeah. So I went to the back and, you know, a lot of times what you do uh, so you can kind of stay with it um, is you go to the back and kind of stretch out. Even if you don't have to go to the bathroom, you go and stretch in the back or whatever. And the flight attendants are back there. And uh, the topic of the school shootings came up. And when he said, well, you know, when we got ready to land in, I think, Tokyo, he said something really powerful. He said, you know, Japan is is still a civilized society. Ooh. So think about that for a second. Yes. That's the impact. 
You know what I'm saying? And he kind of said it like he was embarrassed to actually say that to me. And I was just like, man, you preaching to the choir, bro. I, I mean, I get it. <laughs> you know, I understand the impact of 200 and something mass shootings. And we only had like at that time, 180 something days. And we got more mass shootings than we do days. And then we've got this circus of a man that earned the title of president somehow um, still being masqueraded around the country, being indicted over 70 times, but he's still free. Where did they do that at? So until we really make this stuff, because right now let's just call it what it is. It's not really about Trump versus the United States, you know, Trump being elected. It's really Trump versus <clears throat> with its white privilege versus the justice system. So we're going to see how it plays out. Yeah. We're going to see how it plays, you know, and <clears throat> that's really what's on trial here. White privilege versus the justice system. And I don't know. History's watching. I don't know how it's going to play out. I know how it should play out. We all know how it should play out, but we'll see. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. Um, my mind is getting clear day by day. You know, even though it's rainy season over here, we get glimpses of the ocean, um, you know, and, and the lifestyle, the food, you know. So I'm, I'm taking advantage of a society, a culture that's really not absorbed in the foolishness. Right. Because, you know, shout out to the folks over here doing what they do, um, you know, serving our country. Um, not focusing on the foolishness. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because regardless of what happens with the sideshow, the real work is being done by real Americans to get up every day and do what they're supposed to do, regardless of, you know, the self-absorbed lunatic that still has not uh, been served justice. But what I will say is eventually, I think uh, there's going to be a wake-up call it hasn't happened yet. I think things are warming up to it, but uh, it's going to be some folks that get their feelings hurt. Um, and and one of them um, is starting to, is, I think it's starting to sink in a little bit. You know, think about it. When you can't find an attorney that you want with all that money you supposedly have, that should tell you something. There's so, attorneys that's turning, they're, they're turning them down. They're saying no, no, no. But I think um, this is just about the documents. It hasn't came in on January 6th yet. And I'm thinking why some of the Republicans, uh, congressmen and senators are sweating because I think they're on that list too to help what went on on January 6th. That's why they're trying to squash it so they don't come out in it. So uh, you can see them though. The ones who's talking the loudest are the ones that are in trouble. That's just my perception with it. And and mm -hmm. so I, I see that coming because they're they're like James Brown always say, just talking loud ain't saying nothing. And that's basically what they're doing. They're talking loud, not saying anything. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out. I am watching, observing, you know, a little bit, but we got other things uh to focus on. You know, we still have a lot of things in the community that need attention. We still have uh, a suicide rate uh, in the uh, African-American and, 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 and brown, uh, Latino, uh, Mexican uh, communities that are almost twice the rate of other folks, of, uh, of, of Caucasians. We need to put more attention on that. We need to put more attention on mental health. Uh, so I want to uh, put out there that uh, 988 is the, the, the number and extension that you can call if you're feeling like harming yourself. Um, I'm, I'm request. I'm kind of hoping that people will start taking a diet of the news. Take a diet from it. You know, um, you don't need to watch it all the time. Trump is still doing what he's doing. The Justice Department is still, you know, getting things together, and, and these charges are coming. It's going to work out, but you got to look at it. You know, as you as I'm around looking at things that are older than the United States, that are functioning. Um. We really got to get over ourselves <clears throat> and understand that what we think is important 
isn't necessarily uh, what's most important. Some of these folks don't have half the income that some of us are making, but they're about 10 times as happy. Yeah. The respect. I'll give you a perfect example, right? So uh, we went down uh, for breakfast a couple of days ago, and I guess they overcharged us a thousand yen, right? So I come in today from work, and they're rushing up to me. Mr. Lee, are you, are you Mr. Lee, right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm Mr. Lee. I think so. <laughs> What's going on? You know, and uh, they're like, well, we need to we need to give you a refund. I'm like a refund? For what? We overcharged you. You know, it was the urgency. Like the manager came out, the, came out. They they were so focused on honor. Yeah. They're so focused on, and you can't give them a tip. That's an insult to tip your waiter. Um, if they come up to the door and, and something was wrong with my key, he, they came up there and tried to take the whole lock off. Mm. And and was apologizing, you know, uh, so, uh, so intensely that, you know, um, this was this was happening. So the value system, the just the whole vibe here, we have so much importance on money and uh, prestige and foolishness. It's not where it's at. It's not where it's at, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's good to to make a good living. It's good to, um, you know, know what's going on in the world, but. Don't forget to live your life. Yeah. The things that I'm seeing are people living their life. There's there's so much beauty out here. Uh, and even with it raining, I'm driving around and actually the GPS took me a different way, threw me off. I didn't know where I was at, but I, I, started, I just relaxed. I'm on an island. How lost can I get? You know? So I started looking around at the beauty and all that. So yeah, I knew we had the talk show uh today to do but look when i put my guns in my safe and put them in storage i locked up some of that foolishness too and this is a um, opportunity for me and my family to heal i've been dealing with a lot of things a lot of issues as a therapist and part of that is taking a little diet from the foolishness with this news and listening to watching the 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 uh, uh, indictment tour. That's what I call it. Yeah. The Donald Trump. You know, be honest with you. Yeah. We'll see how it turns out. But yeah. regardless of how it turns out, history's watching. The world is watching. The reputation of our country is at stake. And, you know, believe it or not, in the 70s, you know, we can talk about the educational system, how teachers are struggling over there mm. how teachers over here they're they're honored mm. they make a decent wage they're able to take care of their families they're able to you know uh do things a little differently than, than we than our, our teachers uh we need to put that value back in education on the things that's more important and we got to hold these politicians accountable or get their butts out of office there's no if you're a trump supporter you pretty pretty much shouldn't make it to your next term. Yeah. It, that that's that's where it's at. Anybody that's supporting somebody that has that much damning evidence against them has to be evaluated as are you really a patriot? Are you really somebody that supports the constitution? Are you supporting an agenda that's opposite of the ideals of the constitution? That's what's really what it's going to go on. And you know what? The world is watching. See, they understand. The world understands what democracy is and what also what it's supposed to be. And either we're going to live up to it or we're going to be the laughing stock of it. Yeah. That's yeah. really what it's about. Yeah, you just brought up something of, about history. Um, I did my show, I think it was Monday, and I broke down woke. And uh, mm. so, so everybody could understand exactly what it is. Woke really started back in 1923, if people believe it or not. And then it turned around um, in the 40s 
as uh, coal miners uh, woke up because they, they were not getting the same pay as their white counterparts was getting. And then in the 70s, it really took root. Woke meant injustice for the black community, injustice of equal rights. All that stuff came in there. And so education, all that came into being. So I read that. Then I went on and read DeSantis part of it. He wants to stop woke. So basically, I think I told you before, he wants to reset the United States in the white image. He does not want any of the kids, his white kids, to hear what their ancestors done to the blacks and continue doing to the blacks. In other words, they want to wipe out the history about blacks. We built this country. We made inventions for this country. You just can't take a, a swoop and just wipe everything out. And so now mm -hmm. Santa's in a little trouble down there in Florida, too, because Disney doesn't stop something else that's going to bring a billion dollars over there. And he's starting to get a little bit of uh, things going on down that people's not liking. So it's like I said, if you want to get somebody attention, you hit them in the pocketbooks. And Florida's being well, in the pocketbooks right now, and some of them not liking it. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. Um, you know, first of all, I'm, I'm sending a message here. Shout out to uh, Craig Washington and Martha Rice, everybody in the Impact team. You know, really excited about uh, what's about to be going on uh, with that. But I do. Um, I think we got some some staticky something just coming across the staticky. So we might want to check the the mm -hmm. sound a little bit. I don't. I don't know. Um, I, everything you coming through clear to me, but I don't know. Uh, uh, we got a message from. Uh, I think Craig put a message there on, on the chat. You're static. That it was coming across a little unclear. Let me see. I'll, I'll work on that as we're talking and see if I can clear that okay. up. That's fine. But, you know, you bring up some really good points, Ron, in terms of um, what's happening. I think you need to know, people, you have to understand a little bit about history. Anytime your government is trying to stop you from reading certain books or uh, from, from recognizing uh, history, we got to remember there was a time when um, the saying was in my household is that you're not going to be taught in school your history, so you're going to have to find it out yourself. You got to find out the contributions that people of color, uh, you know, we've made to this country and also how we, how, what we've had to go through. I remember um, there was a uh, series I saw in college that really the first time I really saw an educational institution really lay our history out, which was a series called Eye on the Prize. And yeah. when he got to, and they, and they did an excellent job laying out the civil rights movement, the things that we went through, the, the efforts um, to get the Voting Rights Act, to try to get it passed, which still hasn't passed in the United States, um, which kind of says something. So they're trying to say that uh, DeSantis and Andrew, if I understand the argument, which I really don't understand, I do understand the argument. I understand why they're trying to do what they're trying to do. Yeah, they're trying to uh, say that being taught what really happened causes uh, people to maybe uh, not like themselves or not like uh, their role they played in the country or the history. Well. Facts are facts, you know, and if you don't have those facts, you don't have those foundations, you can slide back to that slippery slope. Look at the, uh, the governments that try to erase history, try to keep you from learning about uh, your yourself, your history, your contributions. You know, last time that happened, I think was Nazi Germany, right? Uh, tried to happen. It, it's happened uh, here uh, in slavery. Well, not here uh, in Japan, but in the United States. You weren't allowed to read. Yeah. You weren't allowed to read because you might find out who you are and also what they're doing to you and to keep you at a certain level. If you're ignorant, you're easier to be controlled. So I understand exactly what they're trying to do. But the fact of the matter is that cat's out the bag. 
We got too many brothers with and sisters with PhDs, with master's degrees, and we're not on our knees. We're standing up. We're not going backwards. We're going to go forward, full steam ahead. If you get in our way, you're going to get rolled over, rolled through, knocked out, laid out, all the above. And you know what's going to do it? Their kids. Their kids, they see it. Yeah. They see who they, they see who their parents are. You know, uh, the next generation is coming. You know, we got some kids, they're not having it. Now, of course, you're going to have some folks that, are ignorant because in some of these states, they're going to be trying to pull books and things off the shelves and they're going to run into folks like me in college that know our history, have been through something and educate them. Then they got to rethink everything that they've learned, right? Yeah. But that's their disadvantage. But also look at the economic um, deficits when you're ignorant. See, Sydney's over here learning Japanese right now. She'll understand different markets, different ways of, of, of doing things, different ways of moving. And if you limit yourself to just what you know, think about it. How effective are you going to be in a global environment? How effective are you going to be in a local environment, national environment? Your products are going to be this uh week <laughs> your your uh whatever product it is be it intellectual be it um and manufactured that's you know you talk about wanting to be uh cutting edge you want to have the strongest uh and and most educated or, or the best products you can't have that without the best educated there's stuff over here right now man let me tell you something I have never sat on the toilet that's been warm <laughs> today. Uh, I'm in love with the toilets over here, man. I, all I can tell you is, you know, the technology is phenomenal uh, over here. And it's stuff that just makes sense. Wooden doors that slide open. I mean, I feel like I'm on a movie set, just just going through my day. And, and, it's, and it's commonplace. Yeah. It's commonplace. You know what I'm saying? Just imagine. You know, kids walking around here, toddler age, going and going to the store, going to the library, and the whole community is watching them, making sure that they're okay. Now, what? How do you think those kids are going to come up? And our kids can't even play out in the front yard. Yeah, that closed that, that off a lot. means you're going to be closed out. You know what I'm saying? So all these folks that have all these um, ideas about not knowing, trying to stop you from history, but also check out, I think it was Idaho that just voted that it's, it's not constitutional to them based on their constitution to uh, ban books. So you're going to have pockets, you're going to have states that people are like, uh-uh, we're going to actually do the right thing. And it's going to shame those other states. And we've had this before. History is doing nothing but repeating itself. Exactly. Jim Crow. Think about it. And also, you got to know your history. That's why it's so important to know your history, the history they don't want you to know. How do you think the Civil Rights Acts passed? It wasn't because it was just a moral issue and all that. It became an economic issue. The, re the way they were able to enforce um, desegregation was it was an economic thing. Check it out. It became illegal for you to not service someone. And that's why you see those signs. We reserve the right to yeah. what? not. We, we, we put, reserve the right to serve. Yeah. Right. But what, what happened was the federal government said, okay, so if you're going to be racist, you're not going to, um, you know, uh, be to, to, you're not going to, uh, do what you're supposed to do, and we'll just withhold that money from your state. If you're still going to have Jim Crow laws, then guess what? We'll just we're going to make it illegal at the federal level, and then we'll just we will just withhold money for your state. So then we're like, oh well, we can't do that. Yeah. So then what they started doing is having sundown towns. Oh, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. I looked that up the other day. 
there are still 400 and something sundown towns in the United States still. You better know it. And if I mean, those, you know it. If those you don't know what, what sundown towns are, that means if you a person of a color, you better not be caught in that town after dark. Basically, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, they're, 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 and you know what? If you look up that list, you might be surprised on how close some of those sundown towns are to where you're at right now, especially yeah. if you're in the south. There's a lot of them in the south, and there's some of them up in the north. But basically, unfortunately, um, I was, I was reading, um, what's well, not unfortunate, um, it well, it is unfortunate that there's people that still are that close minded that miss out on 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 life because of ignorance uh and we already talked about that the problem that holds a lot of folks back in the united states uh and abroad right is uh greed fear and phobia that fear and phobia creates that ignorance and blocks people off from being successful causes them to feel like they have to have weapons uh to the you know ars m16s and yeah, like we said on the show, the enemy that you end up having is the one you're raising, because he's the one or she's the one that ends up going off and dealing with you know what we're dealing with. Yeah, over in the United States, and not just the United States, they're starting to have situations other places too. But we seem to be not leading the way in democracy, but in other things. When he when he when he said that that Japan is still a civilized society. I was like, wow. Yeah. That's deep. No, he's talking That's about deep. downtown. The closest one to San Antonio is on the other side of Austin, Terrell, Texas, Vider, Texas, Wooden, Texas, mm -hmm. Elmo, Texas, DeLong, Texas, Comanche County. You know, not not a not a it's just ridiculous this day to have something like that going on. Well, I mean, you got to look at it. Look at the fans that, of of uh, racism that are being flying. Yeah. I mean, you know, basically, when you talk about the border, interchange anybody of color in that. They want to say, oh, yeah, we're not talking about you as an American and born in the country and all that. Well, didn't they just pass legislation in Florida that says even if you're born in the country? Yeah. You, you, now you can't even be considered and and then they're having that problem right so many farmers are, are are moving out of state that they can't because they can't get their crops in who's gonna do that work i know i i'm not going out in any fields you know what i'm saying yeah we already did that we still wait for the paycheck you know uh for our 40 acres you know and a mule some of us you know what i'm saying um the, the Mexicans are, uh, are 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 coming across and they're putting work in too. We seem to forget about that. When you go to Olive Garden, who do you think picked that uh, that lettuce yeah. over in El Centro, California? You know what I'm saying? So it, it, if they, if these folks get what they want, they they're not gonna like what they get, and that's what they got to figure out if they get what they want. Because they got it. They got the guns now, right? They want guns, they got them. Um, believe it or not, I'm going to drop a jewel from Mike Tyson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> listen, listen, y'all y'all sleeping on Mike Tyson, man. Mike Tyson got some wisdom. He's got some wisdom. You got to be careful who you write off. God likes to pack jewels in people that you least expected, right? Yeah. So he said something. He said, God likes to punish you by giving you everything you want to see if you can handle it. Think yeah. about it. And that was right after somebody asked him, are you happy when you, were you happy when you uh, got that $30 million a fight? He was like, no, nah, he wanted to give it all away. Right? Yeah. So think about it. United States has all the guns they want to secure their freedom, right? But they're less free because of what they got. Yeah, freedom from who? Themselves. Your fear. Yourself. Like themselves. You know yeah. what I'm saying? 
They don't have a gun problem here. <laughs> now, they that, have incident. Yeah, but wouldn't you tell me um, that the policemen over there don't carry guns? I, I don't know about the police. Um, I don't think so. Um, I haven't seen now. I mean, where I work, they do, right? You know, uh, <laughs> but outside of that, not really. Not really. Uh, there's there's really no need for that as a whole, right? The culture is not um, cut like ours. And you got to really wonder, like, how did it, how did we evolve the way we did? And how did this culture evolve the way it did? See, Malcolm X used to say, chickens come home to roost. Right. Yeah. He got a lot of trouble for the comment. That was too that was too raw back then. That was too real. But I, I think we gotta look at it. You know, you can't have you can't treat a people a certain way for hundreds of years and then pretend like, oh, well, you're supposed to pull yourself up by your bootstraps when you were not allowed to have the boots and it was illegal to to, to sell you the straps. But we still excel. We get money, but then mentally, we weren't healed. We didn't heal ourselves. We're gonna get into that on this show and on the on the YouTube channel. Even if we get money, we've seen it. We've seen it. Getting money and you're mentally off or your spirit isn't right, you'd be probably better off not having that money. Because money does what? It multiplies your issues. Some people right now, they think they want this job or they think they want this opportunity. But if they get it, if your mind ain't right, you're going to blow it anyway. And it comes with a lot. Or you're going to mess yourself up further. Yeah, it comes up with a lot more responsibility, too. Yep. You got this thing we're going to do um, called the throne room. Are you ready for the throne room? You know, we go and we're going to talk about a few things. Like a lot of these women out here, they think they're dating a king. You know, the, the, the guy they're dating or married to, mm -hmm. calling themselves a king, a pharaoh, right? Well, first of all, what does a pharaoh mean? I learned that from uh, a little while back. A pharaoh means uh, really essentially a great house. How are you a pharaoh and you don't have a great job and you're not providing for your house? Some women think they they saw a king, but they, what they ended up with is the court jester. And that's why your life is a joke. Your marriage is a joke. But it's not funny, right? So if you if you you know if you're looking for a king, you can't date a court jester or somebody running game. Gotta move out of the delusional mindset. How do we get there? How do we end up? in this these these multi-generational cycles if you want to be in the throne room if you want to marry somebody that's in the throne room in authority you got to know what you're looking for you, you just said a key word you right know what you want. yeah you just said a key word right there cycle we are all in that cycle on um, how we was raised and what we do and everything and um mm -hmm. i'm gonna put this in the example the projects you raise your projects you stay in the projects Somewhere along the line, that cycle has to be broken. But the cycle got to be, it's got to be you who wants to break it. I could tell you all day not to do that. But you're going to continue mm -hmm. to do what you want to do. It's got to be some light bulb that goes off in the heads. And that's where the part comes with education. Educate the people out there. Let them know what's going on. Let them know you could be what you want to be. You don't have to be mm -hmm. stuck in the same cycle all the time. And I think educating uh, our people is the key to success. Education is the key right there, but you got to find the ones who wants to be educated because some could care less. You know, let's be real. You can have some that just want to be right there. They could care less. And those are the same ones talking about somebody who, who breaks that cycle. Oh, they think they're all that right now. And they're right there where they're always at. Does that make any sense? Well, yeah, I want to, I want to uh, give a shout out to Cheryl just, uh, 
put it out there that we need a news detox. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, uh, I'm 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 deto- I'm detoxing right now. You know, I look on the news just to see what's going on. I'm drinking my green tea. Uh, you know that my daughter bought for me and eating my uh, chocolate covered pistachios. Check out that right that uh oh, that man. Japanese. I'm, <laughs> I'm so, but uh, what I tell you is that you know um, eat those foods are antioxidants. I'm sure Cheryl could tell you about that. I know she's into the health uh, thing too. Yeah, but um, you know this is this is, you were talking about. I'm gonna throw a mental health issue since nobody you hit me with no mental health question. I'm gonna just throw one out, throw okay. something out here for you. This is uh, relating to what we're talking about. Everybody look up learned helplessness. Learned helplessness. And it's a phenomenon that runs rampant through our communities. Learned helplessness. I saw it when I was working in the schools where... Um, you know, there was a time when we used to respect our principals. We used to respect our teachers. Um, I was working at some schools and they were they were coming up, popping the trunk on the principal, you know, at one of the schools. I'm not going to say the name of the school. Okay, it wasn't Creston. Shout out to Grand Rapids. I'm a polar bear. but So they, it, it, Grand Rapids knows about that. But um, what I'll say is there were, there were some schools that they weren't respecting the educational processes and and it goes back to they were having problems in school their parents are having problems in school so the school then becomes the problem so educators have a hard time dealing with kids that see educators as problems or they're being singled out and one of the things i would do is say look i don't care if you like this person or not he's got what you need to get to where you're trying to be yes get that education you know, get that education because without it, what are you going to do? You know, and if you're not smart in school, you definitely aren't going to make it on the street. Dumb people in school end up dead in the street or in jail, which is maybe, I don't know, maybe be- better off dead because you're not hurting the community. And at least, you know, I'll, anyway, I'll just leave it, leave it at that. But, um, Learn helplessness, um, it's, it's a serious phenomenon, right? And it's like when people give up before they even have a chance. I ran into parents. Yeah. They wanted their children put on disability because they didn't want to take the time to find out what was really going on with their child. And lo and behold, their child was actually gifted, but they were just bored because they weren't being challenged. I was going to say that. So what do you do? Yeah, Exactly. Because, because you're right. Because, um, uh, uh, for instance, I can say, my grandson, when I found out he made the honor roll when he graduated, and I'm saying this boy never brought a book home. He did all his work at school, and I'm talking about how'd you make the honor roll? Well, I, I did work at school, which is rare to hear that kids do work at school. They bring it home to do it. You know, so he wasn't challenged enough. So I told my son, this boy's not challenged enough. So you got to challenge him. And sure enough, he did and challenged him and and it worked out mm-hmm. fine. You know, mm-hmm. I just posted on here, learn helplessness. I, a little, I don't know if you read it already. That's on there. And Craig, mm-hmm. and Greg, uh, uh, Craig put in train up a child the way they should go. That's right. That's right. But now the thing about that is you got to know which way to go Yeah. before you train up a child, right? So there's a little hidden jewel in there. You know, you got to do some introspection and, and have some spiritual direction before you train up that child. I want to uh, respond to Bashero, um saying that just a new location will not help. Uh, there needs to be a new mindset. Yes. I hear what she's saying. Um, the lo- new location won't necessarily uh, by itself change because you can take old problems in the new situations. But what I will tell you is if you allow yourself to embrace a new location that never had the mindset in the first place that created the mindset you're in, you can learn something. See, that's what happens when 
Um, and I'll give you an example. Um, in, in reverse, there are some people that made it to the pros. Um, I think I, I forget the gentleman's name now. Made it play for the Patriots. Maybe somebody can help me out. Uh, made it to play to the Patriots, but went back and hung with his homies and and killed somebody. Yes, thinking he, thinking he was still a, a gang. But I, I think it might have been Hernandez was his last name. I could be wrong, but I, look it up. Well, I think Patriots. it was Hernandez, and yeah, yeah. So you got to understand something. The location by itself won't change because obviously he didn't have to see himself as a gangbang or whatever the case anymore. But if you're someplace that never had that type of setup, then you can figure out like how how did this evolve this way? And what baggage did I bring to this situation that I need to leave behind. And the environment can then reinforce that if your mind is open to it. Yeah. So the, the key point is you have to open your mind and your spirit to different situations. And some people are going to receive you. Some people aren't, but that's okay. Not everybody's going to like you. That's okay too. But if you love yourself and if you love God, it'll work out and understand yourself and be introspective on some of the same things. If you're making the same mistakes over and over again, relationship wise, financially, generationally, that's your fault. You're not learning. Now, I know some therapists might say, oh, well, well, well let's go deeper. No. I'm going to go, you know, look up Gestalt. I go Gestalt on you. You keep making the same mistake. Well, how does that make you feel? Making the same mistake. Did it hurt? Yeah. Okay. Well, then don't do it again. Yeah. That's just. Well, that's, that's, that's easy for you to say no. Yeah. Because I had to stop some habits too. Yeah. I had to look at myself to figure out what I wanted to do in life. And that's why I'm doing some different things. I'm not saying I'm better than anybody else. I just made different choices in and I put in the work. There you go. See, I put now, in the work. See, that's now, the that's the thing. Yeah, but what you were just saying is one of the quotes I always say all the time. And you're gonna probably either shake your head yes and say, Ryan, what are you talking about? Well, I no. what you just said is what I say all the time. The problem is not the problem. The problem is your attitude about the problem. Mm -hmm. And we got to add something, you know, and I can't, I cannot uh leave this out. You got to be grounded spiritually. If you're trying to make some changes in your life and changes in your mindset and you're not tapping into something, I call it the Holy, you know, for me, I can't speak about it, but to me, the Holy Spirit, yeah. not, you're not communicating with that. Be careful. <clears throat> be careful. Because you might find yourself making the same mistake, mistake over okay. again. Because there's a lot of traps and triggers out here for you. So that's why I like when Cheryl said a new place is not going to change. Look, people spend their life moving here, there, wherever, whatever. Uh-uh. You need to change. The first place you need to change is like Michael, Just Michael Jackson used to say, the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And then you can truly take advantage of a new place, right? And then I'll see how things are different or absorb different things. Or, you know, maybe you don't have to go nowhere. If your mind changes, your environment changes. At least the perception of it does. Well, wouldn't it be um, one thing that I, I learned from my professors is uh, he taught us years of wandering is years gathering experience. All experience is not good, all is not bad, but you should learn the years you wandering, you gather that experience, you should learn not what to do and not keep on repeating yourself. Listen, people are so scared of failure. Also, uh, thanks, Craig, for putting that out there. The uh, gentleman I was talking about to play for the Patriots, they did that was Aaron Hernandez. So I was correct with the last name. Couldn't remember the first. Um, but, you know, um, 
I'm losing my train of thought because that lagged and kicked in. <laughs> but, 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 uh, um, you know, I guess what what I can tell you is, um, in this journey uh, that we're on, mistakes are some of the best teachers. Yes. And some people don't progress because they're scared of making mistakes. They're worried if somebody's going to laugh at them, right? I'm out here right now, half awake, <laughs> uh, half, uh, you know, but I can't about to, about to go to sleep. But, you know, I've seen the effect of some things I have done that have changed the trajectory of some folks' lives. I was serious about what I um, do and I'm around some folks uh, and I have some folks in my circle that are operating in their calling and when you operate in your calling who's going to stop you how can you be stopped if you're operating in your calling if you're operating in what you're supposed to be doing number one it takes some introspection it takes you putting some work in and then it takes some trials and tribulations. Yes. Because if you're working in your calling, um, somebody is going to come against you. Spirits are going to come against you. But that's just to make you stronger. Really? Yeah. Now we're getting kind of we're getting kind of metaphysical or, or, or spiritual. But the bottom line is um mistakes. God gives it lets you go through some things. Life. You know, <clears throat> if I got some physical trainers out there, there's no progress unless you have resistance. Same is true about anything else. My practice wouldn't have grown if I didn't have some people that came against me saying, oh, he didn't. He, who is he? Who does he think he is? Right. Ask your son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ask, go in the classrooms I've been in. Go into, you know, see the results. You know, um, then they're like, oh, OK, well, I guess well, you know, well, he's he's arrogant. No, I'm just confident. I'm just confident. And sometimes when you're coming from an area I came from. If you don't advertise yourself, you won't get rolled over. You're just not going to be seen because they don't want to see you. They'll put you in a position where you're going to train everybody else to go past you. Yeah. And you'll be sitting there working there wondering why I never excel. Well, you know, if you're in that type of place, maybe that's a sign you're not supposed to be there. Elevate. I think in the scripture about, and, and Craig it should, you know, put it out there, um, if you're someplace and they don't receive you, you're supposed to do something. Shake the dust off your what? Feet. That means keep it moving. That's not your place. You're not supposed to drop your seeds in a place that is not going to receive it. Now, I, I, I really appreciate the folks that stay grounded and they have ministries and they have businesses that, you know, are really good for the community. And the community isn't really respecting them. <laughs> they are, you know, really appreciating them. But for those folks that come through, and without them, they wouldn't be there. I get it. That's why I still have a 616 number, even in Japan. If you call my practice, my number hasn't changed. My location has, my station in life has, but you can't, my office, I still have an office in Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's where I started. Now I have an office in San Antonio, Texas. Might have an office in Okinawa, Japan. Okinawa. Yeah. When and if I leave here, right? Yeah. But you're supposed to stay grounded where you're at and then elevate and still that's that means you, that's growth right yeah and some people don't understand that some people do some people get it some people won't but you just keep moving in your calling you keep moving at the way god tells you to even if it hurts you know you said that even we're... even if people laugh or even if you whatever they ain't gonna be laughing too much longer you know yeah. I, I'm glad you said. I'm glad you said calling because uh, 
you know, I, uh, Craig just came back at the, that's in Matthew 10, 14. <laughs> that's why you got to have the right people on your team. You know what I'm saying? Put, the, put that word out there. Well, put that yeah. word out there. Uh, Matthew I, 10, 14. I, yeah. I was told somebody that I retired from my, from my job and somebody said also, um, Mark, Mark Cheryl, one, that's through Mark 11. six, uh, one through 11. See, I, <laughs> I paid attention to Bible study. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, I was talking to somebody the other day, told me I was retired. They said, retired? You're doing the job right now. Your radio said, I said, that's not, that's not a job. I said, that's a calling. I told him just like that. It's a calling. It's not a job. And, mm -hmm. and, and because I said, I enjoy what I do. I said, I don't, I don't have to wake up in the morning and say, oh, I got to go to this job. I wake up in the morning. Matter of fact, you would know what time I was up this morning because you text me at, at four something. I was already up. This morning, uh, I felt bad, man. I, I mixed up the time. I was like, "Oh man, I text him at four o'clock." But I was uh, up, but you know, because I get up and yeah. I'm preparing for the show and reading things and things that's going mm -hmm. on. You know, that's that's my ritual. I do that every morning, even on Saturday right. and Sunday mornings. I can't. So my wife said, "When are you gonna ever sleep?" I said, "I do." Like last night, I ain't gonna lie to you. My body told me to go to bed at nine thirty. I went to bed at nine thirty. I was tired. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you know, you talking about calling. Everybody has a calling, but did mm -hmm. you you don't know what your calling is until it comes. You know, God, well, God will let trial you. and error. Yeah, yeah, trial and error too. That's what that's where those mistakes come in. I've done some jobs that I've been absolutely horrible at. Yeah, and then when I realized it, you know, I was like, uh oh, that ain't it. Yeah. So let me move on to and I, I remember when I took um I, I wanted to be uh I thought I wanted to be an attorney at one point in my life and I took the test right after my grandfather had passed and people were like man you crazy why why would you take your LSAT right after your grandfather passed I said well I want to be so good at whatever I do that no matter what I'm going through I can still be the best at it or close to it. Yeah. So I didn't do as good as I needed to on the LSAT. So I wrote that off. So nah, that ain't for me then. Yeah. That's how you get the throne room. You know what I'm saying? That's how you find what you're supposed to do is when you put some standards like that on yourself. I'm not recommending anybody else do that, but you've got to put some expectations. You got to know yourself. You got to know what um, you want and what how you want to how what you want to do i love working with folks helping them to work out their issues because i had to do that you know um having a parent who was was a drug a drug addict and not knowing my biological father for till i was you know even meeting him until i was like in my 20s you yeah. know i had some things i had to go through so God had brought me through all that so that I could help some other people that may be going through something like that. Working with the youth, let them know, hey, you can do whatever you want to do. You just have to allow yourself to see somebody that's doing that. Yeah. I love what I'm doing. You know, um, there's, a, there's a lot of people that I come across, I'm around, you, you know my circle. Yeah. It's a lot of positive energy in, in that circle. And we, it's got to be that way. It's got to be that way. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that everybody's perfect. I don't know anybody that was perfect other than Jesus. And you see what they did to him. You know what I'm saying? So we're supposed to strive for perfection. And that's where our perfection lies. But you got to know yourself. You got to grow. And, and that's how you can go. Right. But listen, um, I am, where are we at? 1029. Oh. Which is uh, about we can't, trying to stay on that uh hour trying to get, trying I to keep trying to keep it right. I don't have a trick I'm, to tell you this time. No trick question today. I, I know, but I I want to just follow up on something. When I was teaching, um, I'm an electrician by trade, and and I was teaching that in in San Marcos, and the greatest reward if you find somebody in there never knew anything about it. And you found out this person excelled beyond your expectations because it was this one young lady in my class 
she could not figure out anything equation with the electrical. I said, okay, I got something for you. I said, there's money in bending pipe. I'm going to show you how to bend pipe. I'm going to show you how to do saddle bends without measuring. I'm going to show you all that stuff. Well, mm -hmm. she got that down pat. When she graduated from school there, she was hired by somebody in San Antonio. I ran across that girl about three months ago. She is she got her own business and everything. And she said, mm -hmm. thank you, Mr. Gordon. I said, well, I knew you had it. She, she said, no. Thank you. You know, I didn't like wires, but you taught me something else in that class that I can make money in, and she's doing real good at it. So that's my Listen. touch of one person teaching to me. They, they always say teachers, if you touch one person, you did your job. Listen, uh, Craig, Craig just put something out there about uh, what my grandfather used to say to me. And this is what I say that we, you should say to all your kids. My grandfather used to always say, I see greatness in you. I was barely passing some of these classes. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't know what you see, but, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe I'll see it one day. I'll, you know, um, yeah, you're just my grandfather. You're supposed to see that. But yeah. then I started trying to see it in myself, right? He always pushed me to the next level. So then you start. You, you need to, we need to instill that to our kids. Always push to the next level. Always push to the highest level you can be because that's how life is, right? And like Bashiro said, you don't have to have um, degrees to make a difference. You know, you can have life experience. Right. As a matter of fact, before everything I'm doing, that's one of the secrets to my so-called success of what I'm doing and all that, is that before I had the degrees, I had that life experience. But the education just allowed me to know what it is that I was actually doing. You know, before I knew what rational mode of behavioral therapy was, I knew that, hey, I went through all this stuff, but it doesn't define me. Yeah. That's rational mode of behavioral therapy is, you know, you don't have to continue to be a victim. You can heal, deal, and then thrive, you know? So... Once you know that, you understand it. And you say, oh, okay, so that's what that is. That's a modality. Now I can build insurance for what I learned how to do for myself. Yeah. That's just one example. Right? But there's a lot of different examples that you have. You went through something. So maybe God brought you through that pain for it to be your purpose. Yeah. So fine. That's I think that's one of the greatest things about the United States is that if you really are good at something, there's going to be a way for you to get paid to do it. And then you can actually help somebody through it. I'm dropping bars again, man. I've got to leave it alone, man. We got to. Yeah, yeah but uh, V. Cheryl, so, Cheryl, Cheryl, Cheryl dropping something out here now, yeah, talking about going through cancer. cancer. Yeah. yeah. That changed her life to get, get educated. But you said one, before we leave, you said one key word in there. Stop playing the victim. Cause you're not going to move on if you keep on playing the victim. And, and a lot of people, they do that role. They want to play that victim. So everybody feels sorry for you. Okay. Listen, yeah. <laughs> you, you, listen, here's the thing. There's people that go around and they're predators, right? We, we uh, just read uh, my sister's book. Uh, shout out to uh, Ms. Brooks, you know, uh, and her book. She's not a victim. She's a warrior. Yes. Right? The person that continued to do that went on with his life. You could continue to victimize yourself by staying a victim. That's the tragedy. Yeah, bad things are going to happen. You have to deal with those things. But if you continue to allow yourself to stay in that victim mode, that's the tragedy because here's the thing. Go to the graveyard. There's a beginning and there's an end. Your dash is your life in the middle. You can't let a situation carry throughout your whole dash. Heal, deal, and thrive. Yes. Whatever you went through, whatever you went through. If, if you get up and you see the sun come up, 
that's an opportunity to leave that in the past and find what what this this day has for you. God can't bless you if you if you're like this. You got to be like this. Some people go through life like this. Mm -hmm. You gonna push your blessing away, right? Now there is some times to knuckle up, right? Sometimes you will have to fight, but. If it's every day, something wrong with you. You know, you probably then fought off your blessing. Yeah, and that's what it's true. I'm here, if you look, if you look at this culture, the last thing, like I'm, 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 I can't wait to get my daughter in karate, right? But one of the things about karate is you try to avoid fights at all costs, and in that moment that you can't avoid the fight, then you better expeditiously be able to deal with the situation to get them up off you. I think that's a pretty good life lesson to learn. Yes. And a good skill to learn too. It is. It is. Yeah. So oh, hey, pretty good. the actions speak so loudly. I can't hear a word you're saying. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I'm about to catch some of these Z's. I know I probably feel like I'm about to go to sleep right now. Yeah. The screen is getting hated. Yeah, you got me to go to sleep. You, yeah, you got to get used to this. So uh, we'll be all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll get there. You take care. So, shout out to everybody. Friends. Thanks for listening. Uh, you know, can't wait to see the analytics this time and uh, see where, where we're at, what countries we, we didn't we even went to uh, this time. But, you know, I'm glad everybody's listening. Give us some questions. Do we have any questions today? Or was it no. just? Uh, no, just this is the introduction. You'd be, you know, um, over in Japan today. So, okay. Outstanding. But, outstanding. But the questions probably start piling in um, afterwards. I don't know why they do that. They wait till the show's over and ask questions, but that's all right. Hey, that's all right. Especially tonight. Good. I, I'm, I'm glad. Thank you all for doing that because I'm going to sleep. All right. Yeah, all right, brother. You take all right. care. All right. All right. You too. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.